uh, we'll go through the types of the valves and what determines the valve hemodynamics. Approach to evaluating prosthetic valve function. I'm gonna concentrate mostly on two valves because otherwise it will be quite packed. Uh, the aortic and the mitral valves and try to understand the role of all these imaging modalities whenever you have an issue with a prosthesis that you have to develop. The choice of a prosthesis is indeed a balancing act. We're not going to go through, through this today because I wanted to be much more focused on imaging and how do you evaluate them, but you have to incorporate the rate of structural failure therefore the effective age and other comorbidities on the longevity, particularly of a bioprosthetic valve, inflammatory disease, and stage renal disease, a need for anticoagulation, and still required, in a way, of the traditional uh, warfarin, physical activity, women of childbearing age, and as of late, more and more emphasis on patient preference but remember you are the recommending individual you are the recommending physician because while patients may have ideas of what they want to do it may not be in their best interest so you have to have an open discussion as to the pros and cons of whatever you're gonna in structuring this because you could go in many different directions I wanted to share with you one some general considerations and I think there are important when you evaluate such individuals. We look usually at two things. One, structure of the valve itself, its in integrity, complications that you may have. So you have to look at mobility of the occluder in a mechanical valve or leaflet structure. Is there a valvular degeneration already? And we know what the longevity is of bioprosthetic valves. Is there a complication of thrombus and panis, which is more common in mechanical valves, but not unheard of in bioprosthetic valves. Endocarditis and associated complications. Where does these imaging fidelities fit? Is there a role for PET in these situations? And last is the functional one, which also is very important. And I think that's where the first transthoracic echocardiogram is going to be important because Doppler, this is where the Doppler velocities and gradients and measurement of the effective orifice area occur. Is there a valve regurgitation and how much there is in regurgitation? If you do a transesophageal echocardiogram, it probably has the best temporal resolution, close to spatial resolution, but certainly temporal resolution for you to be able to see that. Spatial is CT. Doppler hemodynamics of the valve function. This is the best technology for looking at hemodynamics. CT has probably the best <coughs> axial spatial resolution. And, you know, it, it's important in this situation. Also, it's important that you could see the example on the left there is, I can see a mechanical valve very well. So that's the beauty of CT is, if I want to look at motion, occluder, occluder mobility, some of the issues, uh, if you identify significant, for CMR, it is the other methodology. We have two methodologies that can tell you about velocity and gradients. So MRI and echocardiography. Uh, better in bioprosthetic valves where you can see you're gonna have a lot of artifacts when you have a mechanical valve in MRI. Its main strength, regurgitation, if you're interested for whatever reason of the quantitation of regurgitation, I think it is probably a better methodology than, than many. So, and obviously ventricular function and everything else that you're talking about. It can identify valve abnormality in bioprosthetic valves. Again, large paravalvular regurgitation, the hissens of pseudoaneurysm. You could see this valve dehiscence. You cannot see much on color, right? Similar to the previous example. And the Doppler velocity index in this situation is very high as 2.7. And if you take a look at this valve itself, it is rocking in a major way and the hist in a major way to give significant regurgitation. And on 3D, you will see that this valve is really the hist in a major way all the way and it opens up, that dehiscence opens up in systole every time 
So in conclusion, in a summary of what I shared with you today, one is clinical evaluation. You need to know the valve type, size, and when the valve was implanted. A baseline echocardiogram with Doppler study after surgery is truly is a must, surgery or implantation, whichever way. A transthoracic and Doppler evaluation of structure and function is indeed the first line diagnostic methodology. Its main limitation, mitral valve regurgitation, particularly in mechanical valves. Now, the other advanced modalities, <coughs> they are very important in your diagnosis and management. They complement each other, but please don't stack them all together, <laughs> right? Be selective as to what is the clinical issue, what is that you want to solve so you can aim for that particular modality. <coughs>